Okay, so can you solve a basic math word problem? Well, hopefully the answer is yes, and that's what I have for you here in this particular video. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read you the problem. It says, you finished one-fourth of a job on Monday and one-third of that job on Wednesday. How much work remains after all that work you did on Monday and Wednesday? So obviously we are dealing with fractions, but I don't want to give you too many hints here because I want to give you a full opportunity for you to solve this problem all on your own. And if you want to use a calculator, that's perfectly fine. Just remember you want to justify your conclusions. But uh, if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer here in just one second. And then of course I'll walk through the solution step by step. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and uh, I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so here is the problem. If you want to work on it for a second, uh, just pause the video. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The answer is 5 twelfths. Okay, so that's how much work remains. And if you got this right, that is fantastic. Matter of fact, let's celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face in A++, a 120% and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of solving basic math word problems, they'll be like, wow, you must be a math genius. And be like, yes, indeed, I am. I watch that guy on YouTube a lot. Anyways, uh, if you didn't get this right, no big deal. I'll walk through the process uh, here in just one second. But uh, let's just quickly talk about math word problems. A lot of uh, people don't like to do math word problems. Typically, uh, you know, people are kind of afraid of math problems, of math word problems, and kind of draw an expression like math word problems. Why can't we just do math? Well, solving math word problems is an application of mathematics. It's the whole reason why you learn math, right? You learn math in order to solve real life problems, which of course uh, are kind of um, defined or described in uh, words, right? So that is a word problem. So Anytime you see a word problem, you know, you kind of have to, you know, remind yourself that, yes, indeed, word problems is why you learn math in the first place. OK, it's an application of mathematics. And hopefully we can get uh, those of you that look like this when it comes to word problems to look like this. And let's go ahead and get started. And here is the problem. Now, of course, I read the problem to you, but let me go ahead and uh, give you kind of a, a general rule of thumb for me personally. I think this works pretty well. Anytime you are dealing with any problem in mathematics, especially a word problem, I like to have the rule of three, okay? So what is the rule of three? Well, the rule of three is uh, you don't do anything until you read the problem at least three times, all right? So read the problem once just to get a sense of what's going on. Read it again to try to, you know, start getting more details uh, about the problem. And then the third time, uh, make sure you understand what the question is. And of course, you can always... Uh, look for the question or know what the question is, just find the question mark and back up to that sentence. So you, you got to really understand, uh, you know, the question completely. And you can't just do that one time out uh, to really come up with a strategy. So that's the first thing you want to do is just kind of take your time, read this thing. Now, the second thing you want to do is to try to find some sort of model, uh, you know, a visual model or some sort of sketch. And this course is going to uh, vary from student to student and prom to prom, but try to model the situation the best you can to help uh, help you visualize what's going on. Okay, so once you have all that in mind, then you need to kind of start taking some steps to find the solution. So let's go ahead and start by uh, looking at something like a job, right? So we're talking about this job, someone's doing a job, and they finished a portion of a job, right? They finished one fourth of a job. But what does it mean to have a job and to finish the entire job, right? Well, uh, you want to kind of think of a job, the entire job, as uh, the unit of one, okay? So if I finish the entire job, there's nothing to do. So one minus one is zero. Now, uh, of course, we're dealing with fractions and whatnot, but these type of work problems, this is uh, pretty 
typical in uh, math courses. So uh, to complete something, okay, uh, you know, whether it's work or some other type of uh, word problem situation, uh, using one is a good kind of a start to um, uh, basically define a complete job or a complete task finished. So again, we're going to have the value of a one job or a job, the full complete job as one. And if I was to uh, complete that job entirely, I would subtract one. I did this much work, right? So one minus one is zero remaining to do. Okay, now I think most of you probably get this um, uh, concept and you're like, well, yes, of course, because I only did a fraction of this job on Monday. So we're going to have to subtract some fractions from what value from one. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how that works. And we're going to see how that works in just one second. And I want you to see how the subscribe button works um, while you're looking at this video. Uh, if you subscribe to my channel, my facial expression will be something along uh, these lines. And make sure to hit that notification button. This really does help me big time. Okay, and my goal is to reach as many people as possible to help them in mathematics. So I would greatly appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much. Let's continue on with the problem. Okay, so right here, we want to kind of um, uh, narrow in. We have two components to this uh, word problem, right? So we finished some of the job on Monday. Matter of fact, we finished one fourth of it. So we had this job, we did some work on Monday, but there was still uh, work remaining. And of course, we did another third of that job on Wednesday. And then the whole idea here is to uh, figure out how much work, uh, work remains after Wednesday. Okay, now you can make all kinds of visual models here. But uh, let's go ahead and just take this one step at a time and figure out how much is uh, left over um, after Monday, right? So we did one fourth of the work on Monday. So how much remains after that? Well, if the job is one, right? Again, if I, um, I let's suppose on Monday, I finished the entire job. Well, I would have done one values worth of work, right? So one minus one, there would have been no work to be uh, completed, but I only did one fourth of the job on Monday. So it's gonna be one minus one fourth. Now, again, I'm trying to express this in a way that makes sense to me, uh, but you know, you can find a way that makes sense to you. As long as you're understanding this and you're kind of showing what you're doing uh, so someone reading your work, like a teacher, can understand. So one minus one fourth is three fourths. Okay, now if you didn't quite see that, you're like, oh yeah, if I take away one fourth from one, uh, there's three fourths remaining. So that's how much work uh, is still to be uh, completed after Monday. Now, of course, we did some work on Wednesday, but we're just going to take this one kind of task at a time, one day at a time. Now, here, we are dealing with fractions. One minus one fourth is three fourths. But let's suppose you're like, oh, I didn't really kind of see that. Well, let's just break this down a little bit further. So one is the same thing as one over one. Okay, so one over one minus one fourth. In this case, just to be super clear about things, we need uh, the lowest common denominators to add and subtract fractions. So we have four here. This is one right here, this denominator. So the LCD, the lowest common denominator, is four. Okay, so how do I fix uh, these fractions up such that the, uh, uh, both denominators are four? Well, this one already has four as its denominator. So here I would just multiply the numerator and denominator by four. So that's gonna give us the fraction four over four. And of course, four divided by four is one, okay? So just kind of breaking this out for those of you that uh, need to kind of see uh, this fraction steps uh, broken down in more detail. By the way, if you uh, struggle with fractions, you're having a tough time with anything fractions, I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel about fractions. As a matter of fact, some of my most popular videos, um, you know, I have a couple of videos, uh, probably even more than that, with millions of views. Now that's in, on fractions. And that's an indication how many people struggle with fractions. So if you are having a tough time with fractions, you're definitely not alone, but you can easily learn this stuff. Okay. So again, anything that you don't understand, you need to go back and review. Fractions are really important. By the way, one other quick thing, if you want my best full instruction on basic math, I have a quick math bootcamp. It's called my Math Foundations course. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. That's an excellent course for some of you out there that are looking to just kind of get back into math and improve your skills. All right, back to the prompt. So we have four over four, which is the same thing as one. 
Uh, so now we can go ahead and uh, subtract these fractions and we subtract the numerator. So that's going to be 4 minus 1, which is, of course, 3. Okay, so that's going to be 3 over 4 or 3 fourths. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and now take a look at some sort of visual way to see what's going on. Now, you don't have to do this in my way. Okay, again, this is the great thing about word problems. Uh, you know, you can, um, you know, be very creative as long as you're telling the story how you got to, to the solution. So um, let's kind of look at, uh, this is the way I'm going to kind of visualize it. So here on Monday, uh, we did some work, right, as indicated by this prom. So let's suppose on Sunday we were told, oh, we have to do this job. And to complete the job, okay, we would have to do one units of work. Okay, now on Monday, we did one-fourth of the job. Now we did one minus one-fourth. And we figured out, okay, there's three-fourths of that job remaining. So on Tuesday, okay, we didn't do any work, but we know I have three-fourths of that job remaining. And now on Wednesday, I'm going to schedule some more work. Okay, so how much work are we going to do on Wednesday? Well, that's what the problem uh, has indicated. And this is why you want to read the problem multiple times, right? Uh, just to kind of and you know figure out your kind of a game plan and not to try to do all the work at once okay so here um we got to take a look at the rest of this problem and it says uh and on you did one third excuse me you did one third of the job on wednesday so i'll just read it again from the beginning you finished one fourth of the job on monday okay we just took care of that and one third on wednesday all right so we kind of go up here and we know all right on Wednesday, I'm going to do one third of uh, more, you know, work. Now you could see that one third is not going to be enough to complete the job. So there's going to be work remaining. How much work remains? Well, we have to subtract one third from what? Okay, we're not going to subtract it from one, okay, because we already did some work. We're going to subtract that one third from three fourths. All right, so three fourths minus one third. This is what we got to figure out. Again, we need to find the LCD. We are subtracting fractions, and here the lowest common denominator, or excuse me, the um, denominator here is four, uh, and the denominator here is three, so they are not the same, so we have to find the LCD. The lowest common denominator is 12. Okay, so now that we know what the LCD is, and by the way, uh, how to find the LCD, that's a whole nother discussion. Again, I am talking um, a lot about fractions here, and if you're a little bit lost, just follow those suggestions. But in order to convert or write both of these fractions, such that the denominator is 12, we got to kind of fix up or rewrite each of these fractions into equivalent fractions. So this one, to make this denominator a 12, just multiply it by 3. That means I have to multiply the numerator by 3. So this is going to be 9 twelfths. And then this fraction, 1 third, I have to multiply 3 by 4 to get a 12. So I have to multiply the numerator by uh, four, so we're going to have four twelfths right here. So now I have common denominators, so I simply subtract the numerators. Nine, uh, nine minus four is five, or five twelfths, okay? So that is what remains after uh, we did our one-third uh, uh, amount of work on Wednesday. Now I wanna show you something here, uh, for those of you that may not have seen my videos or know this particular technique about adding and subtracting fractions, it's probably one of my, uh, my most favorite uh, little math hacks in the whole wide world. So here is a great kind of um, tool that you can use when you want to add and subtract fractions and your brain, it just doesn't want to think about the LCD. Let's just suppose you're like, you know what? Uh, I don't want to think about the lowest common denominator. Matter of fact, I don't even want to do fractions. But when you're adding and subtracting fractions, you can use this little technique right here. I call it the bow tie method. So here's how it starts. You're going to uh, take this number in the bottom right. It's a very specific uh, pattern. Okay, so the fraction to the right, this denominator, you're going to multiply this way. So 9 times 3 is, I'm sorry, 3 times 3 is what? That is 9. Okay, then you're going to go from this denominator to the uh, bottom left, and you're going to multiply across this way. You can kind of see this bow tie pattern. So four times one is what? That's four. Now notice here, this is a subtraction problem. So I'm going to be sub, uh, I'm having this. I'm going to uh, be basically be subtracting here. And let me go and actually do this a little bit different. So it's going to be three times three is nine. Okay, minus because this is a subtraction problem. 4 times 1 is 4 over, and to finish this out, it's going to be 
4 times 3, which is 12. And of course, you can see we get the right answer. Okay, so this is definitely uh, something you need to know. And again, uh, you know, when it comes to mathematics, right, all of you could be successful in math. It's just a matter of having a good game plan and identifying what you don't know and just start building up your skill sets. Okay, that's what math is. It's just a total collection of a lot of skills, a lot of effort, a lot of practice. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, the majority of you, 99.99% of you, are more than capable. I mean, your supercomputer right up here uh, is more than capable to handle all this math and much, much more. So never doubt yourself. What you want to doubt is your approach to math, okay? And the first thing you need to um, have to be successful in mathematics is great math instruction, clear and understandable. And that's what I try to do is try to teach math in a non-textbook kind of way. All right. So with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.